Okay, then we are ready to continue. And uh, first today I will uh, finalize this part of the curriculum on uh, inventory control subject to uncertain demand. Uh, we started on uh, one example last week and I will finalize that example now. I will uh, first do a short repetition of, uh, uh, of the main uh, parts of, of this topic and then we will continue to chapter 7 in the textbook and uh, present some uh, uh, techniques for, uh, the so for solving the so-called lot sizing problem. And that's also one of the problems in your assignment, which you should deliver in one week. So, let's first start, uh, well, do a short repetition about these types of, uh, of problems, where you have uncertainty, unlike the problems we have seen earlier, where you had a fixed demand, you, mm, well, you, you know uh, one particular rate of the demand. Now, this is uncertain, it will not go uh, in a, a straight line, you, you don't know exactly what you will sell for the coming periods, but you need to consider some kind of probability function, and also you should have uh, some information about what is expected, what is the average demand. Uh, first, we presented the so-called Newsboy problem, or Newsboy model, which is a, a, a problem where you have only one period, just like selling newspapers. Uh, if, you <coughs> if you are selling newspaper, you have to decide how many newspaper should you order each day. And then you will probably have some uh, average sales of newspapers which is the average on one day, the expected demand. And you will also have information by looking at the uh, historical data, uh, what is the variation for the sales. Uh, and then you have to decide how many newspapers should you order every day because the newspapers has to be sold the same day, the same period as they are ordered. Uh, next day you will have a new order and you will have a new product. Uh, uh, tomorrow's newspaper will not, of course, be the same as uh, today's newspaper, and you are not able to sell uh, a newspaper which is more than one period old. Uh, so here, in these types of uncertain problem, uh, you have uh, only one period. We are talking about the overage cost, the cost of overestimating the market, and we are talking about the underage cost, the cost of uh, underestimating uh, the market, not being able to meet the demand. And the overage cost is, of course, uh, the cost of, uh, uh, of uh, buying too much. And uh, when the day or the period is over, then you have to, you will lose money for those uh, products which is not sold. Uh, and by using these two variables, the CO and the CU, we can find what we call the critical ratio, which is the demand or the percentage of the demand. You should try to meet the, uh, meet the market and, and to, uh, to satisfy the market in one particular percentage uh, of the situations. And this can be found by dividing the underage cost to the sum of the underage and the overage cost. Then you will find a percentage and then you should look at the probability function, which can be either a normal distribution, a continuous distribution, or it can also be one uh, discrete distribution where you know the exact probability of each possible outcome. And then use this critical ratio or the uh, cumulative uh, probability to find out or to decide how many newspapers or, or how many products you should buy every day. Because this will then maximize the profit uh, for, uh, for this uh, product. And yeah, we can also look at it, it uh, this way by showing a graph of the normal distribution in this case. This is now the average demand for the example from the textbook, uh, on average, or the expected demand, you will sell 11.73 products. And 
in this example we also found that the critical ratio were 77%. That means that you have to decide a Q value, an order size, which will meet the demand in 77% of the situation. Which also means that the white area here below the curve will be an area of 23% of the total area, and which will also be the probability of getting a stock out. Uh, and then we talked about the, um, the so-called QR, or the lot size reorder point model, uh, which is uh, a model which is more uh, closely related to the traditional EOQ model. Uh, but now, instead of having an, a fixed demand and, uh, and using the EOQ model directly, we need to have some uh, adjustment and find out the optimal combination of the order size Q and also the reorder point R, which is the level of the stock when you should place a new order. And since you have uncertainty, you will have, um, you don't know exactly how much demand you will have, have in the lead time, the time from you are placing the order and until you receive the goods. And that uncertainty in the lead time is what will decide whether you will have a stock out or not, and also decide the size of the safety stock. And the safety stock is then the, uh, defined as the average level of the stock when you receive a new order. So we can show this graphically here. Here we, as usual, know that the size of the order will be the value Q. And here we have a lead time, which is the time between that point where you place the order and that point where the order is arrived. And then the reorder point is this point, the level of inventory at the time you are placing an order. And as you can see here, you have a variable demand. And here you have this number of items left on stock when the order is received. In another cycle, <laughs> you will have another variable demand. And sometimes, to a given probability, you also will have a stock out. You are not able to meet the demand. And when you have a stock out, it will be a cost for you, either as a loss of profit of products which is not uh, sold, uh, or it can be other costs. Uh, you can still sell the product in some time, uh, some situations, uh, but you might uh, give uh, a, a discount or you might also just keep track of the order and deliver it to the customer when you are getting the item back on stock. So there are lots of different situations for different products and different markets, but uh, uh, independent of, uh, of situation, you will have some kind of cost if you get a stock out in one cycle. Uh, this is the cost function. Uh, and we call the cost function the G, and now it is dependent on two variables, both the Q, the order size, and R, the reorder point. And we can try to look at this cost function and uh, compare it with the cost function in the deterministic or fixed demand case. We can see this part is similar to the ordering cost. The lambda, the demand divided by the Q, will tell you how many orders you will have in one full year, and multiplied by K, the cost of placing one order. This part is the holding cost. H is the cost of storing one unit of inventory for one full period, usually a year. And this part is the what we call the cyclic inventory stock, which is one half of the order size divided by Q, uh, divided by, by two, uh, similar to what we have seen in the deterministic situation. But now we also need to include this part, which is a reorder point minus the mu, and the mu here is the demand in the lead time. This part is the same as the safety stock, which is at the bottom of uh, the cyclic inventory. Because in a typical 
uh, in a typical period, you will have a safety stock down here, and you will have the order will uh, be maybe placed at, at this point, when you have a reorder point here, and you will receive the goods at this point, on average, when you have exactly the size of the safety stock on uh, le left on stock. Sometimes you will have more, and sometimes you will have less, and even a stock out. But this is the average level of the safety stock. And can also be denoted here as the R reorder point minus the expected demand in the lead time, or the average demand in the lead time, from this point and down to this point. Uh, and in addition to the, holding, uh, the ordering cost and the holding cost, we have the last part here, which is the penalty cost, cost of getting a stock out, a penalty, a fee, or whatever cost you will have. And this can be found by multiplying the P, which is the penalty per unit of getting a stock out, multiplied by the lambda, the annual demand, divided by Q and multiplied by the function N of R, where the N of R function will be the expected number of stockouts when you are using a reorder point of size R. Because you can find, calculate mathematically the expected number of stockouts, uh, and if you have a large reorder point, that will mean that you also will have a large safety stock, and then the probability and the expected number of stockouts uh, uh, in one cycle will be very small. But if the reorder point is small, then the safety stock will also be small, and the probability of getting a stockout will be higher, and then the expected number of shortages, the N of R, will also be higher. So this is now the cost function we are using with the three different parts, or you can also say four different parts. You have the ordering cost, the penalty cost, and the two parts of the holding cost, either uh, both the cyclic inventory and also the safety stock. And when we have a function with two variables, we still want to find the optimal solution, and to find the optimal solution in a function, you should derive it and solve it when the derived function is equal to zero. If we do that, first we derive with respect to Q, and then we derive with respect to R, we will get the formulas shown here. Either, uh, or first the Q will be the square root of, first part here is very similar, or is actually similar to the EOQ function, 2 multiplied by lambda, divided by the holding cost, and multiplied by k, the ordering cost, but then we also, in this stochastic situation, has to add the penalty and the expected number of multiplied by the expected number of shortages with a given value of R, the reorder point. Uh, if we derive this cost function with respect to R, we can find the expression here, which is 1 minus F of R, which is actually easier to use than to have an expression for R directly. So 1 minus F of R, in, if we have a normal distribution, will be similar to the area below the normal distribution curve, which is larger than this particular value, which is uh, defined the, or described by the R uh, reorder point. So this is now the probability of getting a stock out with a certain value of the reorder point. So now we have two functions here, the Q and the 1 minus R function, which should be solved iteratively every other time until we will get the same value in two consecutive iterations for one of these variables. But because then, when we get the same value, we know that we will just keep on getting the same value on the other, uh, <coughs> on the other variable too. So we don't have to to continue. And this will usually uh, happen within uh, well, one, two, three iterations. 
So, the solution procedure here is now first find the optimal solution, iterating between the two equations we have just seen for Q and R until we get uh, convergence. And the cost effective approximation to start, we need to have a value to start with, uh, is to use the EOQ formula to get the value of Q which is a good approximation. Probably not the best, but it is pretty good. And we can start with that one. And when we have a value of Q, we can easily calculate the value of R, or y 1 minus the F of R. And we can find the new value of R and then update the Q value by using the formula we just saw on the, the previous uh, slide. So, we also started on one example last week. I will finalize that example now. So we should just have the formulas here. Uh, and uh, we hopefully remember these values, which is the values in the example from the textbook we will look at. We have um, a cost of the product or, or a value of the product, which is 10. We have an interest rate of 20%, which means that the holding cost and this is given annually. So the holding cost will be the value or the cost multiplied by the interest rate, which is two. That means for storing one item of inventory for one full year, it will cost you two of that particular uh, currency we are using here. We have the tau, which here is the lead time, time between an order is placed and the goods are received which is six months, which is rather high. Probably we are, well, shipping the product from, with a boat from uh, China or, or, or something. So we have a very high lead time here. We have to place an order six months until before we get uh, the goods. The penalty is here given to be 25. The K ordering cost is 50. And the demand in the lead time is given to be 100. And we remember that the demand is six months. That means that the annual demand, which we have to use in the formulas, should be 200. Uh, what is very important is that we have the same time uh, uh, period for the demand that's as we have for the interest rate and the, the holding cost, which is corresponding here. So if we have an annual interest rate, we need to have an annual demand. Or similar, if we have a monthly demand, we might need to find the monthly interest rate or dividing the annual interest rate by 12, and so on. Make sure that you have the same uh, time unit on the interest rate and the demand. And also, this value, 25, is given to be the standard deviation in the lead time. In the lead time of six months, you have an average demand, an expected value, which is 100, also denoted as the Greek letter mu in the formulas, as we just have seen in some of the slides. So here, the expected demand is 100, and the standard deviation of the demand in the lead time will be 25, which tells you about the variation of the demand in the lead time. And from statistics, we remember that when we have a standard, the standard deviation will describe the shape of the normal distribution curve. So if you have a very high standard deviation, it means that you have a curve which looks more like this. Uh, it is symmetric, or at least it should be symmetric, and it will be a very high or a quite high probability of getting an outcome which is far away from the expected value. Uh, otherwise, if you have a very low standard deviation, you will have a curve which looks more like this, which means that you have a very high probability of getting an outcome which is very close to the expected value. And when uh, to get an um, outcome far away from the expected value, we'll have a very low probability. So there, the standard deviation will tell you about the shape of this normal distribution curve. So let's now try to look at this example 
and uh, find the optimal combination. I think we finalized that part uh, last week, but we sh should still uh, look at the uh, at the way to to solve these types of problem because this is uh, well, my experience. It's, it, this is uh, often quite fun, quite uh, quite difficult, and this is also very important in the curriculum of, of this course, both on assignments, but also on uh, on exam problems. You will probably get uh, some uh, some questions about this optimal combination of the two variables, the order size and the reorder point. So let's now try to solve this problem for the with the variables we have just defined here for this example. Uh, and as we remember, we start by calculating the Q value, which is the EO. Let's call that the Q zero, using the EOQ formula. And in this case, we will find that we have an order size of 100 as the starting value, 100. Then we have a value of Q, and we can easily calculate the cumulative or, or the probability of getting a stock out, which is shown by this formula here. So 1 minus F of R0, let's uh, call that R0 because now we will increase the Q the, or the index of the Q and index of the, uh, of the R until we will conclude about a value for both of these variables. Now we can use the formula shown here, the Q, which now is the Q0, 100, multiplied by H, which we have already found here, and divided by the penalty and the demand. This gives us a value which describes the probability of getting a stock out of 0 0.04. Calculating this expression, we get 0 0.04. And now we should use the normal distribution table for the normal distribution and find out, let's call that the, the mu, the expected value, and we should find out which value which we can call the, the t here, for which value of t will we have a probability of getting a stock out of 4%. So look at the normal distribution table. And we, let's use A4 because here we have what we actually need, both the well, we have very easy, we can find a 1 minus F of T in this column here, which is actually what we are looking for. And we are now looking for the value in this column, which is 0 0.04. So let's go down. Now we should start to get closer. 0 0.04 will be found here at a Z value of 1.75. Here we have 0 0.0401, which is the closest we can come to this value we have calculated. This means that now using a Z value of 1.75 will give us a probability of 4% of getting a stock out which also will say that 96% pr uh, probability of not getting a stock out. And then we can easily calculate the corresponding R or reorder point because the reorder point, in this case the R0, the first value, we will we'll update it later, it can be found by using the mu or the average, in this case it is the demand in the lead time, plus the standard deviation in the lead time multiplied by the t value we have found here. This is 100 as we have seen here. 
demand in the lead time or expected value of the demand in the lead time. The standard deviation in the lead time is 25. So 100 plus 25 multiplied by 1.75 will give us a value of 144. That means the policy so far is order 100 units when the stock level reaches 144. But still we are not finished. So let's now look at the next or the next formula here which is used to update the Q value and here we now want to find the new value of Q which is the Q1 which should be the square root of 2 lambda multiplied by k plus p multiplied by the n func function of r and divided by the holding cost. This is now the formula for finding the value of q, the optimal order size. And we know that, well, these parameters are known. The only thing which is not known or will change from one iteration to the next one is this one, the n of r. Expected number of shortages with a given value of the reorder point. <coughs> and to find that one, we need to go back to the normal distribution table and look at what we call the standardized loss function, which is the, or here it's called the partial expectation, the L of T, this column, and we know that we have a 1.75, yeah, it's a bit not straight line here, but anyway, the corresponding value for this L of T function when the T has 1.75 is 0 0.0162. So here we can also see that the L of T is 0 0.0162 and by using this standardized loss function, the L function, we can find the value for N of R as the expected number of shortages by using the C value of 1.75, which will be the standard deviation and multiplied by the L of C uh, value, which now will be the standard deviation of 25 multiplied by 0 0.0162, which is 0 0.405. Zero point four on five. And now we can use that value in the expression here, and we can easily calculate the new value of Q, the Q one, two multiplied by the lambda, which is same uh, yeah, yeah, well this is the demand and the lambda. I'm using the D and the uh, and the lambda uh, as the, uh, with the same meaning, but th this is of course the demand, this is the annual demand, and uh, the annual demand is 200. So let's use the lambda here, and then we can use the, the mu, mu value, as which also will tell you about the expected demand here. So. And of course here the expected demand in the lead time of six months is 100, which means that the annual demand, the lambda, is 200. So here 2 multiplied by 200 multiplied by this parenthesis, the k value, which is 50, plus the p value, the penalty, which is 25, multiplied by the n of r, which we now have calculated to be 0 0.405. 
and divide by 2 and take the square root. Then we get a value of q, an updated value of q, uh, which now will be 110, which is different from this one. That means we have to continue. We, have not, we are not done yet. But we are always, for every iteration, if we do these calculations correctly, we will get a value which is closer and closer to the optimal value. Which means that 110 is closer to the optimal value than the previous value, which was 100. So now, by using 110, we can update the formulas here. And then looking at R1, using the Q1 value, which means that we now, using 110 in this formula instead of 100, we will get a total uh, or a value of 0 0.044. 0 0.044 is closer to 1.70. This is the closest one, 0 0.044. Four, six, or eventually we should probably have used 1.71 because 0 0.036 is closer to this one but that would mean that we have to go through one more iteration when you know the answer but uh, you should of course choose the closest one so here let's assume that we have done one more iterations and we have now chosen 1.70 by looking at this value and comparing it to the result of the calculations here. The new Z value, 1.70. The new R value, the R1 value, will now be 100 plus 25 multiplied by 1.70, which is 143. For 1.70, we can also find the L function here, 0 0.0183. Uh, and we can then calculate the expected number of shortages by multiplying this number to the standard deviation and we will get 0 0.4575 which is the expected number of shortages, the n of r function which again can be used in this function. And as we can see, this is the only parameter that has to be changed from one iteration to the other one. And in this formula, this is the only parameter that has to be changed. All the others are constant or they are known in advance. So for every iteration, update the Q and update the N of R and calculate a new value of either the Q or the probability of getting a stock out, 1 minus f, for a certain or a given number of r. And now we will continue solving these two, at these two um, functions, at least uh, one more iteration, and we will eventually find that the optimal value, I think the q two will now be 111 and the R will be 143. So this is now the <laughs> optimal combination which we will find when we are calculating these two uh, formulas every other time. Optimal combination that will minimize the cost in this case is order 111 items when you have 103 items left on stock. So, let's now also yeah, note this one. Optimal combination, Q uh, is equal to 111 and R is 143. So we have found 
these values and now we should try to analyze, calculate the different costs and find the safety stock and, uh, and some, some other uh, parameters which will describe this policy. <coughs> so here we can quite easily calculate the safety stock. Safety stock, S, or also often called the SS, but now in this textbook it's called the S, will be the difference between the reorder point and the expected value. This will now be the average value of the stock. R minus mu. You can also find it by multiplying the standard deviation with the value of t. You will get exactly the same solution. But uh, now when we know these values, it's of course easier, well, just to look at the difference between 143 and 100, which will give you a safety stock of 43. This will on average be the level of the stock when you receive a new order. <coughs> Uh, let's also look at the formula and calculate the cost of this policy. Here, the G of QR will be the holding cost, if we use the sequence here. First, the holding cost, the cyclic inventory and the uh, the safety stock will now be the H, which is 2, multiplied by the Q value, 111, divided by 2, plus the safety stock, which we have found to be 43. And then look at the ordering cost, which is K lambda divided by Q. K is 50, lambda is 200, divided by 111, and plus the penalty of 25, now this is the penalty or the stock out cost, multiplied by the demand of 200, multiplied by the N of R, the expected number of shortages, which we well, we should have just found that this is uh, uh, now 0 0.4575. Multiplying the standard deviation of 25 with the value of the standardized loss function or the L function for the chosen value of C. We'll give you this number. And divided by a Q value of 111 which here will find that this part is 197, this part is 90.09, and this part is 20.61, a total of 307.70. So this is the cost for this strategy, and you can also try other values of Q and R, and see that you will, with other values than the optimal combination, you will get a poorer or a, a higher uh, total cost, if you will try with this one. But here the total relevant cost for this, in, in this case, will be a total of 307.70. Yeah, I use a few more minutes to finalize this example, just to go through the analyze here. Uh, cycle time, the time between the orders and also between the deliveries is Q divided by lambda, which is now 111 divided by 200, which is 0 0.556 years. So approximately 6.7 months. 
This is the cycle time. Divide the order size by the demand, and if you are using an annual demand, you will get the result as a fraction of a year. We can also talk about what we call the service level, which is a quite um, well, uh, it's uh, quite important, and if you continue on master's level, you will have lots of uh, uh, well, more information and also problems regarding service levels, which will tell you about the service level, the service to the customer. One service level is uh, what we call the probability of no stockouts. The probability that the demand in the lead time uh, here, uh, let's use demand for the lead time of tau, will be smaller than or equal to the reorder point. This is the probability of no stockouts, the probability of being able to deliver. And this will now be the same as the f of r, looking at the normal distribution table, which now in our case is 1 minus 0 0.044, which is 0 0.956. 95.6% uh, is now the probability of being able to deliver, uh, the probability of not getting a stock out. And before we take the break, we'll also talk about the other type of service level, which is also called the fill rate. Uh, this is now the proportion of the demand that are not met, or actually which are met, which is uh, being delivered directly from, from the stock. And this is the, this is the P1 service level. Let's now talk about the P2 service level, which is the other one, which is the expected number of stockouts per cycle or to get the service level, we should take one minus the expected number of stockouts per cycle, the n of r function divided by q. This would give you the proportion of the demand which is not met. And by subtracting that number from one, you will get the proportion of the demand which is met, which is called the fill rate service level um, the service level uh, P2. And in this case, this will be 1 minus 0 0.4575 dividing by the Q value of 111 will give you 0 0.9959. 99.59 percentage is the fill rate. The, the uh, means that this is the fraction of the demand which is satisfied directly from the stock. And the service levels are used to describe the quality of the service. And for example, you can have a management decision that 99% of the demand should be met directly from the shelf. And then you have to adjust the policy according to that particular demand. Okay, a few minutes over time, but we we'll now take 15 minutes break and then we will continue with chapter seven about methods for the so-called lot sizing problem.